Hello folks, um, Dom Lawson here, failure, time waster and heavy metal dickhead um, with another Iron Sandwich. Uh, this of course is the thrilling um, conclusion to my top 20 Metal Hammer friendly albums of the year list thing. Um, I know it's been scintillate, scintillating so far, so um, you know, obviously I'm sure you're all sat on the edge of your seats. The 17 of you that might be even vaguely interested, um, but I, you know, fuck it, I might as well finish what I started. Um, and uh, today, yes, it's numbers five to number one, uh, which I suspect will be entirely predictable, um, uh, but a couple of these may not be entirely predictable, I don't know. Um, you may be expecting Mastodon to be in my top five, they're not, so they're not even in my top 20, that just doesn't mean I don't think it's a brilliant record, uh, it is, uh, but it probably would have been like number 21 or 22 or something, where I, if I had the energy to, to write a top 50 or something, or, or a top 101, which seems to be the done thing these days. Um, <sighs> moving swiftly on. Um, but anyway, so we'll start with uh, number five, and I've I've kind of got all the CDs to wave, except for this one. This is the one out of my top twenty that I don't actually have a, a CD copy of this yet. So I, I must I must remember to um, um, uh, email a press officer and request request I can't even talk request a, a free copy because obviously I'm not going to pay for it. Um, because I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a bit of promotion here, aren't I? Really, so you know, it's all part of the deal. Um, and, I, and I do spend more money on CDs than you do, anyway. So uh, you know, don't think that it's all uh, freebies in my life. It really isn't. Um, so yes, my number five is the absolutely fan fucking tastic Hammers of Misfortune. The album's called Seventeenth Street, and it's on Metal Blade Records. Um, they just there's something magical about this band um I, I describing them is difficult because although in some ways they're uh, you know I've seen them described as old school metal or you know pr progressive metal they don't really fit into any of those categories particularly neatly and um there's just something re incredibly original about this band you know um there are certainly elements of a very you know old old school um metal and old school prog in what they do, but the, the overall sound is extremely distinctive and original, I think. And and the the albums they've made up until this point, all of which are brilliant and all of which are well worth checking out, especially if you like, you know, interesting, imaginative, um, heavy music. Um, they've, they've all been just, you know, they've got a brilliant catalogue already. But um, I was really excited about Seventeenth Street because you know they're, they're one of those bands that everything they've done has been quite special and. and I, and you kind of go, oh god, I hope this is as, as good as the rest of their stuff. And actually, if anything, I think this is probably my favourite thing that they've done. Um, it, it first came, to, the first thing that I heard was um, the song The Grain, which would definitely be in my top five songs of 2011. I think it's, a, it's just an absolutely wonderful epic track. Um, you know, which is kind of a it's kind of a metal song, but it also also and this don't let this put you off unless you're a fan of big country. But it, it reminds me of big country. You know, something in the vocals really reminds me of big country. But musically, it's not particularly like big country. But um, but it's just um, just a wonderful wonderful song. And uh, and the whole album, I just think it's it's one of those albums that you know you really have to listen to. Uh, you know, without distraction, because there's there's a lot going on, but it's it's all it's a lot about atmosphere and it's a lot about um uh about you know songs kind of uh, that cliche of a musical journey it kind of it really does take you on a musical journey um and uh, and a fascinating and exciting one and one that also makes you want to bang your head so um you know it's just uh, it's an album that I've I've played and played and played it just cuz it it never never gets dull you know and it's just oh it's just it's such a such an amazing band you know and and it's always so it was always so satisfying to to be a fan or an, an admirer of a band that uh, are consistently um, top notch, you know, consistently making records that are distinctive and idiosyncratic and and yet um, accessible as well. You know, uh, John Cobbett, the main guy in the band, he's not, you know, he's not out there trying to confound people with with kind of bewildering um, arrangements or anything like that. You know, there's something there's something subtly straightforward about what they do, but um, but it's just. It's just fucking amazing music, and it's fascinating, and it and it's and it's um, and it's soulful, you know, and it and it's um, 
just you know one of those albums that um, I think transcends all the, the the genre divisions and all that kind of stuff, and it, it's just a really really great heavy metal record, really. Um, and it's got that warm analog feel to it that has been a, a hallmark of their stuff to date. Um, but it's also um, it, it doesn't sound old fashioned, you know. It's 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 got a kind of age, ageless quality to it, which I think is is brilliant. So, if you like your metal and you like your prog particularly, I think it's an absolute must to check this out. Um, and I think you can you can certainly hear the grain on on YouTube, if not if not the entire album. So so do check them out. Hammers of Misfortune, very very special band, I think. Um, and that's my number five of two thousand and eleven. Now my number four. As with the, the Devin Townsend Ghost record, this is an album that really only kind of sneaks in um, by dint of the fact that um, uh, the guy that made it is kind of ostensibly connected to the metal scene in a number of ways. But th this record itself is not a metal record by any stretch of the imagination. And it's a progressive rock record is what it is. Um, but I'm just, just bear with me a second while I get the CD because it's not actually a CD. Um, that I can wave at you. It's a bloody great, enormous thing. Here it is. It's Stephen Wilson, who is, of course, the uh, the greatest thing ever to come out of Hemel Hempstead. Um, and uh, I think I'm somewhere on that list, but probably around the 327 mark. Um, but this is the special edition, as you can see, which is an absolute delight. It's um, it's all CDs and that, and uh, and then there's like a Blu-ray as well. It's fucking. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing, and I. I I mean, just oh, just wonderful. I'm a sucker for this kind of packaging and, and presentation, but obviously this costs about £8 million, pounds, so uh, only buy it if you love Stephen Wilson, which, of course, you should do, because, you know, Porcupine Tree, No Man, Blackfield, you know, Bass Communion, all kinds of amazing music that he's been responsible for. Never mind the fact that he's from Hemel Hempstead and he's a very, very lovely fella. Um, Stephen Wilson is an absolutely extraordinary talent. And Grace for Drowning, which is the title of the album, I think is one of the very best things that he's ever done. Perhaps even the best thing he's ever done. I mean, it's certainly something that is more likely to appeal to the prog fans than the metal fans that kind of got into Porcupine Tree via the connections with Opeth and all the rest of it. Um, but it's, uh, it's. Yeah, I just think, you know, again, lies with Hammers of Misfortune. It's a fascinating record. And, this, uh, and the thing with this, his first solo album, Insurgents, Insurgentes, insurgents, um, was was very much influenced by the kind of post punk and and eighties um, kind of bleak alternative rock kind of stuff. You know the Joy Divisions and the Killing Jokes and and, and all that kind of stuff, and had had a you know had a kind of uh, dark almost almost industrial feel to it, um, and was probably a little bit closer to Porcupine Tree than this. But with this, he's used a lot of jazz musicians and prog musicians. Um, Tony Levin plays on this, and uh, and amazingly, Nick Beggs from Kajigoogoo plays bass on it um and marco miniman if you know anything about drumming marco miniman is the fucking man um and it's just it's just an astonishing record really um it's you know about 75 percent of it is entirely instrumental there's not you know vast amounts of vocals on it and it's just it's um it contains so many ideas and so much kind of uh just again atmosphere you know is something i always bang on about but records with atmosphere are, 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 will endure far more than just your kind of cheap thrill records most of the time because it's uh, in, ter in terms of you know your, your relationship with the record as a listener you know it's it's something that you can come back to time and time again and uh, and it will be consistently enjoyable so grace for drowning by stephen wilson it's an album to immerse yourself in and um you know, it ranges from kind of, you know, really beautiful kind of piano ballad type tracks to 20 plus minute prog epics. Um, and because of the musicians that are on it, like I say, which are kind of prog and jazz musicians, it's got a really kind of loose and live feel to it. Um, and I saw him when he played at the Shepherd's Bush Empire, um, which was his very first sh uh, show as a solo artist. And his band, many of whom are the, are the guys on this record, it, it was astonishing. It was just a fantastic gig, you know, and... Uh, um, a quite a special night, really, you know, and it and it just goes to show that you know that, that, that this is this is somebody who's not not afraid to do new things and to to take his music into new areas and to you know to challenge his audience a little bit, you know. But it's it's a it's a fantastic record, and no, it's not particularly metal, but there are heavy moments, and you know, um, if you know anything about Stephen Wilson and Porcupine Tree, then clearly there's a there's a connection to metal there. So uh, fuck you if you don't think it should be in my top twenty. It bloody well is. How do you like those apples? Um, right, my number three, if I can just uh, have a little uh, cheeky look now. My number three <coughs> is probably the last surprise of the top 20. I think my top two are so 
glaringly obvious to anyone who knows me that um, it's hardly even worth mentioning them, but I'm going to anyway. But my number three is this. Now, I am a massive, massive, massive Necrophagia fan. This is Necrophagia. The album's called Death Trip 69. They are one of my absolute favourite metal bands um, of all time. Uh, Killjoy is the world's greatest horror buff. I mean, you know, I know quite a few people that are really hugely into their horror films and stuff, but I, no one on the planet knows more about horror movies and horror culture and, and horror literature and all those kind of things than Killjoy. He is the, he's the fucking man. And he's recommended so many things to me that are that are awesome. You know, um, he knows his shit. And the, th the difference between Necrophagia and other bands that kind of dabble in horror is that... Um, what Killjoy does is he infuses the music of the band with the kind of atmospheres that you got in those classic those classic horror films and slasher movies and, and video nasties, as we used to call them in the early 80s, you know, and stuff. The real kind of grubby underground stuff and stuff like Fulci and, you know... Um, Argento and John Carpenter and, you know, things like Cannibal Holocaust, Hello, Look at the T-Shirt, you know, stuff like that. And that, the atmosphere and the soundtracks to those music kind of seeps into into these records now ne necrophagia are basically a death metal band in many ways but they're they they've got a real kind of um trashy unpleasant gnarly grubby kind of feel to their music that is just uh, no other band comes close to it for me and 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 I think it's um this is I would get you know they've made some brilliant records in the past um you know the divine art of torture was a particularly fantastic record um and you know oh god uh, you know the whole catalogue is worth checking out because every album's different. You know they've had many different lineups. There was the lineup, of course, that had Phil Anselmo playing guitar in it and stuff. And you know that a fascinating band, also arguably the first ever death metal band in many ways because they uh, they put Seasons of the Dead out in back in God, when was that nineteen eighty six or something? You know, like even before Scream Bloody Gore came out. So, so they were doing this. You know, Kildra was doing this stuff way before everybody else. Um, you know, but this is uh, it's called Death Trip sixty nine. It's uh, a rather fabulous thing. Uh, with a rather blood spattered cover there, which is rather awesome. I don't think that's actual blood, but I suspect it's one of those bits of packaging that if you split it open and then consumed the liquid in here, you would probably die, I think. So probably best not to do that. Um, but it's it's just a fucking brilliant record. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 there's some tracks on this album that just literally take the breath away. I mean, uh, you know, just some of the best metal I've heard in a long, long time. The production is raw as hell, but it but it's well produced as well. It, it's it's uh, it's clever, clever shit. Um, and Kildra is one of my, my favourite people in the world to interview because he's just such a such a sound bloke and he knows his horror back to front. You know, his house is like a shrine to horror. You know, I, I would very much love to go there and, and see all the crazy memorabilia he's got because he has a vast collection. Absolutely top man. So this album was just an absolute thrill for me this year, and um, I can't recommend it highly enough. You know, if you like if you like death metal, if you like extreme metal of any kind, and you like horror films, then this is the fucking mother load and, and I thoroughly recommend that you get buy a copy of this. It's on Season of Mist Records. It's called Death Trip 69 and it's my number three of the year. So there you go. My number two of the year. In any other year, this would have been my number one, I think. Um, just because the number one is particularly fucking brilliant. But um, I don't even think that any of that sentence made sense at all. But anyway, um, my number two of the year... Predictably, I think, really, given if you know anything about my musical taste, is this, which is Opeth Heritage. Um, I find it unfathomable. I have to say, when this when this record came out, you know, there was a lot of talk beforehand, and and it and if you'd read any interviews with with uh, with Mike over the last two or three years since Watershed. Um, you would have known that he was planning to do something very different on the next album. He's never been somebody who's repeated himself endlessly. He's always done interesting things with his band's music right from the very beginning. Um, and so I found it absolutely unfathomable that when some people heard this, they were going, that, oh, he's oh, it's rubbish, it's not as good as Blackwater Park, oh, he's betrayed metal, he's, you know, blah, 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 because there's no metal riffs on it. Um, the guitar tone is not a metal guitar tone. There's no death growls on it, and yes, he is, you know, arguably one of the greatest growlers on the planet. Who a matron? Um, but you know, it's an Opeth record, and I, I, I personally think it's, you know, it, it might not be a logical step on from wa Watershed, but it's not a, an amazingly surprising step on from Watershed. Some of the stuff on Watershed really was pointing in this direction, you know, and. Um, 
Heretic, I just think it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful record and a very clever record. Um, it still kicks ass. There's still some really great heavy stuff on it, but there's a lot of really beautiful stuff on it as well. And yes, it is. It is effectively a progressive rock album again, um, but it's uh, but it's a heavy progressive rock album and it's an incredibly imaginative progressive rock album. Um, I mean, some of the tra some of the tracks on here are. You know, my, among my favourite Opeth tracks of all time, I think the Devil's Orchard is an absolute masterpiece. If you haven't seen the video, check that out because it's incredible. Um, Slither is brilliant. It's a very blatant and, and almost mischievous tribute to Ronnie James Dio. You know, it's it's just a, a, f a fabulous hard rock song. Um, Nepenthe, if that's how you pronounce it, um, is just kind of a crazy jazz prog thing that you know was to totally off the wall and totally not like anything Opeth have ever done, but it totally suits them. You know, um, and my favourite track of all on the album is Folklore, uh, which I I love so much, uh, largely because of the incredible solo that 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 appears towards the end, and it's got a real kind of Dave Gilmore feel to it, and I just think it's it's just beautiful. And the album's book ended with a wonderful bit of piano at the beginning, and then a really kind of of gentle um, instrumental at the end, and it's just it's a perfect perfect album in in construction and you know the way it's put together. Again, a musical journey, but it, it's just it's a wonderful wonderful thing. Um, this is the special edition thing that comes with a free DVD. What's it thing? Um, there is also uh, this version which I shall uh, which I thoroughly recommend, which is the the giant vinyl box set thing, which is. Um, also fabulous and well worth squandering money on um so yeah there you go that's my number two heritage by opeth one of the greatest bands of all time and uh you know much much more exciting than most music that came out this year uh, people who think that prog rock is boring are really just you know what is wrong with you really that's the whole point of it is that it isn't you know um it's it's interesting music that that takes you somewhere new and somewhere fascinating you know not not Here's the same old generic twaddle repeated over and over again. As much as I love generic twaddle. <coughs> and so to my number one of the year, the least surprising thing ever. Um, you might as well switch off now, really. Because, yes, it's Machine Head, Unto the Locust. Um, you know, I, they're, I, in a way, they're a band that polarise opinion, but not that much. I think the vast majority of metal fans dig Machine Head. Um, and, you know, I, I've been a fan since I bought Burn My Eyes on the, the very day it came out. Um, and I've been a massive fan ever since. Um, you know, we 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 all know a couple of albums in the middle of their career that maybe weren't as good as the rest. Uh, but basically, to me, they they are one of those bands that absolutely tap into what I love about metal. Um, and you know, I mean, I, I edited the the Machine Head fan pack this year, and and clearly, you know, I there is a degree of bias in my choice, I suppose, because I know the band, and and Rob's a friend of mine and stuff, and and you know that that obviously strengthens one's one's bond with a band when you actually know them personally. But um, but I heard these tracks quite a lot earlier than than the most people, and I I have to say that the hairs on the back of my neck stood up straight away as soon as I heard them, you know, and it just. To me, it's just it sums up exactly what I want from modern metal. Really, uh, you know, one of the things that's often overlooked about about Machine Head is um, the fact that they, you know, that their their albums sound like a band playing live in a studio. It's, they're always brilliantly recorded, but um, you know, Dave McLean does not play to a click track. There's none of that precise dropping of drums onto some kind of Pro Tools grid. You know, it's it's a real band booting off, um, and you know they. There's just atmosphere and energy and urgency to to this record, um, and and passion and belief and integrity and all those kind of things that you know, people uh, you know they're one of those bands that that arseholes on the internet take pot shots at and say oh, yeah, they've jumped on bandwagons and all that. I, I personally don't believe that Rob's ever jumped on a bandwagon. He's always done what he wanted to do at the time, you know. And if you don't like it, don't fucking listen to it. Go fuck yourself. Unto the locust, though, to me. I have to say, um, I think it's better than the blackening. I think it's my favourite thing they've ever done. Um, I think just this. I mean, I am hell. It's just an as astonishing piece of music. I think it's brilliant. Be still and know, incredibly inspiring tune. Locust. I think when I first heard it, I thought it was probably the least remarkable song on the album. But actually, it's grown on me, and now it's one of my all-time favourite Machine Head songs. This is the end. Brilliant. You know, just uh, you know, a fast modern metal track that kind of teaches the young whippersnappers how it should be done. Darkness within, best thing on the album, just beautiful. You know, totally unexpected um, uh, detour for the band. It suits them down to the ground. You know, the lyrics are, I think are exceptional. I think they're genuinely moving. 
Um, uh, you know, uh, again, hairs on the back of my neck standing up with that one. Pearls Before the Swine is quite an oddball track with loads of fucking awesome riffs in it. Um, and then Who We Are at the end is just an absolute towering heavy metal anthem. And yes, it's got kids singing on it, but, you know, I kind of like that because, um, like I've said to a few people, you know, sometimes you get a, a kid's choir singing on an album and they're all singing perfectly and it's all a bit twee and annoying. With this, it's just, you know, it's Rob's kids and Phil's son and um, the engineer Juan's kids. And they're all singing and they sound like kids actually sound like when they sing, you know, they're kind of all out of time and out of tune and just kind of singing for the joy of singing, you know, and I think it, it, it totally is beautiful. It totally fits with the song, you know, um, what can I say? I just think it's an astonishing record and, uh, and it's the one that, you know, this is the one album this year that, that has, um, you know, that I've listened to the most that I've, that has filled me with the most kind of joy and that has, um, inspired me the most and, um, you know, made life worth living, you know, and that's, that's what music's all about. And that's what metal's all about. Uh, and I love Machine Head with a passion. And I think, you know, uh, if you don't like them, that's totally cool. I'm sure they don't care and I don't care either. And nor should you, it's just one of those things. But for me, uh, they represent something really important about the music that I love. Um, and, uh, you know, if I could only have one album from this year, this would be it. Um, I think it's a masterpiece and, uh, I don't think, to be honest, heavy music gets any better than that. So there you go. Machine Head, Unto the Locust, my number one of the year. Um, I might whip through a few obscure things that people might have missed in the next one. Maybe there's a couple of prog albums that I really want to talk to people about. So let's, let's do some of that in the next Iron Sandwich. And I say let's, I mean, I'm going to do that. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, apologies if any of the ghastly rubbish that you like wasn't in my top 20 but you know it's my top 20 um, and that's your lot thanks very much for observing my face and um, Satan bless you all and uh, yeah God, it's nearly Christmas isn't it oh well never mind fuck off Jonah Louie and uh, cheers thumbs up heavy metal thanks folks bye